What's up, beautiful people, to another episode of the Pursuit of Destiny podcast. It's me, Ricky Jones Jr., back again for another episode. And if you are watching on YouTube, you see me outside in the element in a space in which you have not seen me before. I'm going to explain what this space is and why it is significant to this particular video and podcast. And for those that are listening on your favorite podcast platform, what's up? I hope your day is going well. And if you could, if you would, go ahead and follow me on your favorite podcast platform, wherever you are on, on YouTube. Go ahead and click that subscribe button as well. Before we get into it, which I'm excited, you all saw the topic of discussion. It's about hearing from God. How to hear from God if I can hear from God and what is the voice of God? Those are the questions in which I am going to answer today, largely because it's one that's been asked many, 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 many times to both myself and my lovely wife. And I was like, well, I've been in that space before. I've asked those questions before. I've wondered before. I've been in the place that you may find yourself in or a friend of yours may find themselves in as well. And I've overcome that, okay? And so I'm talking from experience. I'm talking from being on the other side. And I hope and pray that this moment in time will be a blessing to you. And if you know somebody that is questioning, is challenged with, the ability to hear from God or whether or not they can hear from God, please be a blessing to them by sharing this particular podcast episode with them because I know it will be a blessing to them, okay? And so why not give a blessing and a gift in the form of a free, right, podcast episode? So let's go ahead and dive into it with the understanding of, hey, how do you hear the voice of God? And that could be a question that anybody could ask at any given time. A uh, short story about myself is that I've been raised in the church in the sense of in birth, right? I've been in church after the birth, right? I've been in church while being developed in my mother's belly. I was in church, right, with her. And so I've been in church for years, all that to say, for years, for years, for years. I heard preachers preach millions, maybe millions, well, thousands to be exact, thousands of sermons. I heard many of songs being sung in church. I heard preachers give excellent messages and at the end suggest for people to spend more time with the Lord in prayer, spend more time in the Bible. And I was like, OK, like that's the Christian thing to do, to pray and to read the Bible. And I was living in church or, yeah, growing through church with the understanding that only the preachers, only the ones that are delivering, only delivering the message, only the pastors could hear from God. However, what about the rest of us? And I'm sure Maybe that was the thought that you had. Only the pastors, only the ones delivering the messages could hear from God. But the ones that are sitting in the congregations, the ones that are sitting in the church like myself at one time, maybe God doesn't speak to us. Maybe God speaks to us only through them. And then I had to think, well, maybe not. Maybe I could hear from God myself, largely because while growing up, my father was a Pre well, is a preacher, was a pastor at a time, and he could hear from God. I know he could, largely because I got caught up one time, right? I do not go tell this story, but there was a time living in my parents' house that I had the audacity to sneak a girl into the house, and I had it all lined up. She parked down the road, walked over to the house, came in through the window on my side, in my room, and, you know, my parents were on the other side of the house. Like, I had space. It was nighttime. It was sleep. I assured that I already made sure the alarm wouldn't go off because I left the window crack open. Like all the tricks that I did, my kids could never do. OK, but nonetheless, I had it all set up. She came in through the window. We were watching TV or whatever, whatnot. Then I heard a knock on the door. Bang, bang, bang. And I thought to myself, oh, snap. Like, I'm not going to say the girl's name. But nonetheless, be quiet. You be quiet. I told y'all I'm outside and there was a helicopter that just went by, but nonetheless, I told her to be quiet. And uh, uh, I went to the door, you know what I'm saying, just creep the door open. I don't know back then, I don't know if I would usually just open the door wide open or whatever or not. I did that and my dad, uh, he called me outside the room. He said, hey, come, come here, son. Came outside the room. He said, uh, God told me, woke me up and told me that you have uh, your girlfriend at the time, your girlfriend in the room. I need you to go ahead and tell her to leave. And we'll talk about it after that. I said, OK. Yes, he was so calm and I was so scared at the same time. But nonetheless, <laughs> that did take place. And I was like, oh, snap. OK. And so I told her to leave. And sure enough, we had the conversation. And at that moment, 
if that was any moment, but at that moment, I knew this man could hear from God because I did everything right for this to be able to go smoothly. And yet it's still God shared with him that there was a female at my house. So anyway, all that to say, it was ingrained in me from that moment on, he could hear from God. And so with that example, right, amongst many, I said to myself, self, there is an opportunity for you to hear from God. And we just have to tap into how to figure that out. And it wasn't until I graduated college, okay, great people, not saying this to say I've been hearing from God since then, or I was saved at seven years old and I've been hearing from God. No, this was after I graduated college. And let me even share this point and part of the message, right, or of the podcast is that even while in college, I accepted, I heard from God, accepted the call to preach, preach messages, preach sermons, and all of those things that had dynamic experiences and came up with curriculum, hearing from God about various things, but yet and still, I didn't have an everyday walking about conversation with God. It wasn't through my daily living that I was hearing from God or hearing the voice of God and things like that. So I knew that there was a gap in between the life that I was living, the experience that I wanted, and what I was reading about in the Word. I would only quote unquote, hear from God when I was receiving messages. I would hear clearly from God, get all my point, all my scripture references, and it would be impactful. I had a great time and the list goes on. However, after that, right, the the Monday through Thursday when I wasn't sermon prepping or things like that, I wasn't tapping into my ability to hear from God. However, I'm getting, I'm saying all that to get you to this point because ladies and gentlemen, after graduating college, in between, I had a little gap between graduating in December and starting school in May is when I was like, I want to spend more time with you. And I was like, okay, all right, God, I heard that. However, I don't know what to do with that. However, God was like, start journaling, start journaling. So I started a journal, started journaling, started writing in his journal. And in that time with God, God revealed to me that he wanted more of a relationship with me, not just a religious experience that I was having with him. So you may be asking, what what is this religious experience that you're talking about? Well, going to church, right, on Sundays, going to church on Wednesdays, and maybe sometimes on Saturdays, and going through the rhythms of church, right? You know, you start it off with devotion or prayer, and then you get into some praise and worship, and then you hear some announcements, and then you hear a message, and then you give your tithes and offering, and then the call to salvation, and then there's the benediction, right? I could do that all day, like... Church is church, and it does that in various forms. However, there was more, right? That was a religious exercise that I was doing, not necessarily growing my relationship with God. And God was like, that's what I want with you. Outside of those Saturdays, Sundays, and Wednesdays, I want an everyday walking about relationship with you. And I was like, okay, God, I got I'm open. Like, but how, how? And God started me off with a journal, right? And that journal became the birthplace of my relationship with God, my epicenter for my everyday walking about experiences with God, the foundation to my ability to hear from him every single day, right? And I was just in that journal. I was in that journal. It was different things that I was doing in a journal. And the beautiful thing about the journal that I'm talking about is that it's actually on Amazon, right? God did release me to put it together, package it so that others can have experiences with God that are desiring to hear him and desiring to live a life that is not only pleasing in his sight, but pleasing in your life, in your sight, your everyday walking about life and having a relationship with God. Hearing God's voice is going to be that key to open the door for you to enjoy life. And so that was the journal that helped me. And then I learned some things while in that journal. God wants a relationship with me. And it's not just me, right? If you are a believer, if you are a Christian, if you are a person of faith, which, you know, I am, and I'm not apologetic about it, right? I know who my source is. I know from whence my help comes from. I know that the word of God is older than the economy of this world, right? Therefore, God is my source. I trust him. I know those things to be so. And so, boom, I recognize and realize that God wanted a relationship not just religion. But then too, I recognize and realize that God is always talking. Ladies and gentlemen, God is always 
talking. If you read the word, you know, even if you skim over the word, there's a verse and passage of scripture that my sheep hear my voice, words of Jesus, and a voice of a stranger they will not follow. And there's a voice to be heard from God that allows us to be, to do, and to have all the things that we were designed and destined to be, destined to do, therefore destined to have. And as you walk about life with God, he will speak to you in ways that unveils them, unleashes them, and talks to you about them as you go about your life, which even is the reason why my lovely wife and I and the kids are moving to Johannesburg, South Africa. I heard it from God. It wasn't told to me by anyone. I didn't read it in the scripture from the Bible. It was something that came from the mouth of God spoken to me within the spirit, right? And so, you know, fun times, good times, right? So even to the how, the how is a, is a fun part because what you have to first do is recognize that God wants to talk to you, right? And just think about any relationship. Any good relationship is built on a solid foundation of communication. Some may say love. Maybe love to you is that first piece of the whole relationship puzzle. However, for me, I believe that communication is pivotal for a relationship to thrive, to grow, and to expand. Because out of that communication, you're able to communicate your love. You're able to talk about how you feel. You're able to talk about what doesn't feel right, what isn't right, so that the right can be done. And so that's why communication is big to me. And so like how, how? It's the realizing and recognizing that God wants a relationship with you. God wants to talk to you. His sheep, God's sheep, hears his voice. We as believers, as Christians, as kingdom citizens already have the ability to hear from God. My sheep hear my voice. That was a statement that Jesus made that we can now operate in today. It didn't say my sheep may can hear my voice or one day my sheep will hear my voice. No, 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 no. It was spoken in the past with a present tense in mind. My sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger, they will not follow, which means we have a choice. We have a choice to choose of to hearing of the other voice, right? The voice of a stranger. We have a choice. However, we will not follow, right? That's what he says. And that's what we can walk in. But then outside of that, right? We know that God talks continuously. He talked to Noah. He talked to Abraham. The list goes on of those in which he's talking to. And my friends, he's talking to you. And you may be thinking, what does the voice of God sound like? Oh, my God, what an awesome question. It's probably not what you think. You're probably thinking of this thunderous voice and a sound that just crackles through the clouds, similar to thunder during a lightning storm. It's not like that. The Bible lets us know that God's voice is a still small voice, that voice that speaks from within, right? The inner knowing. Sometimes people say, I just knew to do this because something within me just said X, right? That's something within most likely is God speaking to you through Holy Spirit, right? That's within you. And so there's that beautiful connection. And even as believers, I pray and hope that you even are filled with the Holy Spirit because that too is a direct connection between us as believers and God himself. And the Bible lets us know the purpose and the actions of Holy Spirit, which simply is Holy Spirit doesn't say what's within him. He only says what the Father says. And so that's even a beautiful thing itself. And not only that, the relationship part, not only that, but God is always speaking. However, God is always speaking to those who believe. Long story short, it's not just for the preachers. It's not just for the pastors. It's not just for the deacons, the elders, or the people of the fivefold ministry. No, God wants to talk to all who believe. God wants to talk to all his sheep. And the beautiful thing about sheep, right, is see, we hear verses and we just glaze over what it's saying. My sheep hear my voice. Why did Jesus reference us who believe as sheep? Because sheep are animals in which they they just follow the shepherd. They're, you will never see a sheep leading a sheep. Like sheep don't have leadership capabilities within them. Sheep have to be led by a shepherd. And so, right, even in the Old Testament, it was written down, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We 
most of us know the 23rd Psalms. However, not even recognizing the words and the impactfulness of those words, being a sheep lets us know that we continuously need to hear from the shepherd, right? The Lord is my shepherd. God is my shepherd. God is my source. And from that, we are able to do, we're able to move about, we're able to go about, we're able to conquer and win, we're able to start businesses, start school, start going to school, change a career, have a spouse, have children, right? Out of the shepherd speaking to us, out of hearing from God, we're able to do the things necessary that God already has predestined for us to do. And so even recognizing and knowing that God speaks to all is even going to unlock, right? So what am I saying? Your ability to hear from God is already there. I don't have to do anything. Nobody has to pray for you to be able to hear from God. You already have the capability to hear from God. What I am prayerful is that through this podcast episode, it breaks the chains that have been blocking and stopping your capability to hear from God because they all start and they all have power within your mind. As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. If you think in your heart, if you think in your mind that you can't hear from God, you will not, right? Because what you say is what you get and what you think are seeds to the things that you say. So why not think differently? Let this podcast be an awakening to you for you to recognize and realize you can hear from God. God does speak to you. God speaks to his sheep. You are a sheep as it pertains to following God, right? And we are all kings and queens, right? We're a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Yes, those things are true. However, when it all boils down to it, we are sheep following after the good shepherd, which is our Lord God, right? And Jesus who gave himself for us so that we may come boldly before the throne, right? That's what happens during prayer. We are able to come boldly before the throne whenever we want. Our prayer time is our capability to be heard from God. And prior to Jesus, there had to be sacrifices that then people for us would pray to God about the things that we wanted to pray to God for. However, now with the ultimate uh, lamb that was slain, we now all have the ability to come boldly before God and cast our cares, cast our petitions, uh, conversate, direct communication that we're talking about here. And even through the journal, right? If you go pick it up on Amazon, it'll bless you, but it also bless others that are seeking to hear from God because the last part, even to why I'm even out on the court right now, this is, I'm currently in my parents' house. Shouts out to my lovely parents uh, that live in Atlanta, Georgia for allowing my family and I the opportunity to come lay here until we make the move over to Johannesburg, South Africa. I'm out here because on this court, my parents made this all happen for me at their home while I was seeking to play basketball. Like I was young, I thought basketball was a thing that I loved to do and not that I could go to the NBA. However, you know, we'll see how far it could go. And so they did this for me, for me to be able to practice, for me to be able to exercise hearing God's voice. And the journal, what is he to you today, simply has for you to think about and hear from God about what is God to you today? How does God want to reveal himself to you today? How has God spoken to you today in ways in which you may not even have recognized or realized, but when you start putting pen to paper, you're like, oh, wait, I did hear that today. I was told this today. I did feel this today. And start writing the things that you hear. Start writing the things that you feel. Start exercising. Maybe I heard this from God. Maybe I I felt this way. Start writing those things down. And even there's a portion of you to write down requests or desires that you have from God. Why? Because oftentimes we believe that God doesn't hear what we're saying. God doesn't hear the desires that we have. But when you write those things down in a journal and then you go back and reflect, right? What I've been taught is that you are to reflect, you are to attend, and you are to protect the things that pertains to God. So there's going to be times where you go back 10 days from the day you start, you know, the journal and go back. Oh, wait, I did have that desire from God. And wait, I do see what I desire or I am walking in the desires of my heart. It's like, whoa, this did happen. We can get so caught up in life that we don't recognize that we're walking in the prayers that were prayed months ago, days ago, weeks ago, however you are. We all are walking in the answers of somebody's prayer. Just 
soak on that. And so there's that opportunity and option within that journal. But the journal gives you the opportunity to exercise God's voice. Do I do the journal every day now? No, it's been, man, that journal I did and started that journal back in 2013, 10 years ago from the creation of this here episode, 10 years ago. So no, I don't do it every day. However, when I first started, I was doing it every day. God was talking to me every day. There's a section where you pray, you hear from God and you write down what you're hearing. Just write down, just write it, write it, write it, write it, write it, write it, write it. And I go back and look at those things and I look back on the things that I acted on. That's the fun part. What things did God say that I acted on and the results because of it? One of the things was, truth be told, is God gave me a uh, layout of who my wife would be. He gave me three points. Talk to Crystal one time. She hit all three points. I sat Crystal down and said, Crystal, you are my wife. She said she already knew it. I'm like, my God, come on, man. Let me have this moment. Where are your tears at? Where is the excitement? Like, where is it? Every, she already had a relationship with God to the point where they conversed and talked on a regular basis, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. When two people come together, they can hear from God. And so what am I saying? Even if you're in a relationship or you have a marriage or you're dating somebody, both of you get the journal, get the journal with both of you having the ability to exercise your ability to hear from God, writing down the things that you hear from God and then comparing those things and making sure that you're lining up with what thus says the Lord. Also within that journal, God told me who wasn't my wife. I was dating somebody, you know, loosely say it. I was strongly communicating with a lovely woman. And God said, that wasn't your wife. What did I do? I cut that relationship off immediately. If she wasn't my wife, I wasn't going to waste her time. I wasn't going to waste my time because I was definitely looking for a wife at that time. However, God said that wasn't your wife. Little things like that. Some would say a little thing like that could go a long way. But no, that's a life altering decision. If I did not cultivate my relationship with God, I would be married to somebody that God did not purpose for me before the foundations of this world for me to be married to. Right. That's no knock to her. Beautiful woman. Great woman. Lovely woman. Woman of God. I pray her nothing but blessings. Right. With her and whomever her significant other will be. However, through my relationship with God, conversing with God, talking to God, I knew that was it for me. And so all that to say, another reason why talking to God is something that you want to have within your repertoire, within what you do on a regular basis and something that you can exercise and cultivate. No, I didn't become an NBA player because of this. What am I saying to say? Like, because of the journal, because of you exercising your ability to hear from God, you may not become the next TDJs. That may not be for you, right? You may not become the next Todd, Michael Todd. That may not be for you. Stephen Furtick, that may not be for you. Uh, name any prophet that you are big on right now. All that to say, just because you are in relationship with God, having conversations with God, don't look to them as who you will be. No, God specifically and distinctly has something for you, a purpose for you, a destiny for you. However, in your relationship with God and talking to God and spending time with God, whatever God has for you will be revealed and spoken to you. However, you will have a journal that you will have those things written down in so that whenever tests and trials come, because they will, You'll be able to go back on what's been said. Don't worry about what's being said. Don't worry about what's going on. But think about what's been said, even to the point of when Jesus told his disciples, let's go to the other side of this body of water. The winds start coming. The, the waves start coming. The water start getting into the boat. What was Jesus doing? Sleep. Because Jesus already said what they was going to do. However, they all worried about Jesus. Do you care that we about to die? Jesus is like, come on, y'all, a little faith? Why? Why were they a little faith? Because they got caught up in what was happening and forgot what was said. Ladies and gentlemen, what I don't want for you to do is as you grow your relationship with God and your communications with God and your ability to hear from God is for you to forget what he said, which is, again, why that journal is going to be beneficial and impactful to you. No, this is not a sales pitch for the journal. However, what I do know is for those that are questioning their ability to hear from God, for those that are looking to strengthen their ability to hear from God, it will be a great 
exercise for you. You know, say you might not be able to shoot like MJ, like I was doing on this court, you know what I'm saying? Or slam dunk like Vince Carter, like I wasn't doing on this court. However, what you'll be able to do is be all that you were called to do. What I was able to do on this court is all that I was designed, destined, and purposed to do. Take jump shots, do a couple layups, lose a couple games. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I had a great time. And what you will do is have a great time in your life. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want this to be long, but I want it to be purposeful. And I want you to know that you can't hear from God. God wants to talk to you once you unlock a relationship with God. And you already have the ability, so don't go looking for it. My friends, I'll put the link to the journal down below, and you'll be able to get it. And uh, have a great time, okay, great people? What is God to you today? Ask that question each and every day, because a new facet and nuance of God wants to be revealed to you. Who believe i love you all great people and i will see you on the next episode it's actually been a long time since we uh had this podcast i think we've been going through a lot okay and a lot to be done and so thank y'all for staying tuned to the boy you know what i'm saying and not forgetting me and uh you know i'm excited for all that god has for us and we'll share it all right whether it's on this podcast or on our family channel we want to be a revealer of the truth and of who God is to you. So love you. God wants to talk to you.